This is a tutorial of the game Evergreen, as played on Board Game Arena. Evergreen is a game where you are building trees on your own planet and scoring points throughout four different seasons based on sunlight and the way that it hits those, those plants and trees, and also based on how you clump forests together throughout these different biomes. If you have played the game Photosynthesis, this is done by the same designer, and there are a few concepts that are similar, but it is definitely a different game. For one, each player has their own separate board, uh, which all are structured the same, but you will build out in different ways. The game is a series of drafts. We are drafting cards, uh, and those cards let you do certain actions in a specific biome based on what you're drafting. And then they also let you do a special power. You have six special powers that you upgrade and then are able to use during your turn as well. So the point of the game is to try to build up um, sprouts and trees. So each the, the process of building goes first a seedling, which is just kind of a a brown stick, which you'll see, which you'll see, a small sprout, and then a large tree. And large trees at the end of the game can give you points based on the zone that they're in. And the sprouts and the trees, when they clump together, give you points after each season for your largest forest connected forest. And when they are facing the sun, which will rotate around the planet, those give you points as well. The beginning of the game, there is a fertility zone established where cars will be flipped over and we're just looking at these top fertility icons and they can be one to three or even none. And cars will be flipped over until at least five of these icons are shown. This fertility zone will build up over the course of the game and will be used in end game scoring. See, these represent the different biomes on your world. If you have trouble with the colors, you can look at the symbol and then look at the symbols on the board here. So this dark green matches this dark green biome over here. And basically at the end of the game, every big tree that you have in the specific biome will be worth that many fertility points uh, based on how this is grow how this fertility zone grows over time. And we'll explain that in a bit. So this is established first and then a a draft of cards is laid out where one more card than players uh, will exist. So in a two-player game, three cards will be laid out. In a three-player game, it will be four cards. And then players will choose cards, starting with the first player. And then the last card is added to the fertility zone. So in this case, you can see there's a grassland. This this is that lighter green biome. There is a snow biome card. And then this one is actually a wild card, which lets you, doesn't re, uh, restrict where you can do a specific action. But if one of these cards is not chosen, one of these two cards is not chosen, it will go into the fertility zone. And if it doesn't exist, I mean, neither of these exist right now, so they'll create a new stack. But if, there, if it did exist, it would start stacking up in that fertility zone, adding points to the to that biome that will give you those points at the end of the game. So this drafting will happen five times in the first season, then four times in the second, three in the third, and two in the last season. So it does get quicker as the game comes to an end. So what do you do with a card? Well, when you choose a card, it tells you the biome that you are, biome that you are restricted to, and then with that card, you can do one of these four actions listed here on your board. But are basically ways to grow plants and, and such in that specific biome. The four options you have are plant three seedlings. There's no adjacency rules. You can plant them anywhere that you want, but they have to be within that biome. Action B is to grow twice do two grow actions a grow action could be a seedling to a sprout or a sprout to a tree 
you can't grow the same thing twice. You can't go a seedling to a sprout and a sprout to a tree in the same turn at the same spot. But you can do two different actions within, again, within that biome. C lets you do one sprout and, or one seedling and one grow action. And then D lets you do either a sprout or a grow action, and it doesn't matter where you do it. It's not restricted for the biome. So this is in case you just can't do anything in that biome that you chose, you can do one specific, one action anywhere along the board. So that's the first thing that you do with the card you draw. The second thing you do is this special power, and this will be different in each card. You can see the different cards have different special powers. When you draw a card, you will upgrade, first of all, that special power. So these are the tracks that you have. They're little short tracks, but they let you upgrade and then do that specific action the number of times that you that is at this specific level. So for instance, uh, this one right here is the sprout power. If I chose this, which I think I en ended up doing on this first turn, it first moves this to track to level two and lets me do two sprout actions or placing two of the seedlings. Apologies, I've been calling the, the small, smaller trees sprouts. The, there's seedlings or sprouts and then a smaller tree and a larger tree. You'll kind of see it visually here. This one here lets you place small trees, replacing sprouts with your small trees. Uh, there's this one right here lets you create large trees. And again, each of these has a track and it'll upgrade each time. So the first time you use that special power, for sprouting, it'll be you can do two sprouts. The second time, it'll upgrade and you can do three. And so the big trees, it's first one, then one, but then eventually, if you get it high enough, you can do two big trees in a single turn. So those are the basic actions that you already kind of know. And then these ones are a little bit different. So first, this one here just gives you points, that number of points. So the first time it gives you one point, then two points, then four points. Not great, but four points isn't isn't anything to scoff at. But and, and if you really need that biome, then you may just choose it anyway. The water, when you upgrade it, lets you place that many water tokens on the board. And a water token, when you place it down, will automatically grow two adjacent plants. And you can pick which ones those are. So if I if I had a, two seedlings here, two sprouts here, and I put a water right here, I could grow both of those into small trees immediately, placing the water. And so the first you get to place one, one, and eventually two. The bushes are plants that you can put into spots that don't do anything on their own, but they connect forests together so that when you're looking for largest forest, you can use those bushes as part of your largest grouping of forest for points. So you choose a card and you do the action in the biome, pick one of these actions, and then you do the special action on the card. And that special action can happen in any biome. And then it can even happen on top of something that you already did in that biome. So before I said the restriction, you can't do it on the same spot, but that doesn't apply between the biome action and the special action. So just as, a, as an example here, my opponent here picked the, the grassland. I chose the wild card here, and then the snow biome card went into the fertility zone. So now at the end of the game, these will be worth two points, anything in the snow biome. Any big trees, big trees only count for those, not small trees and not sprouts. So this now says, okay, you can use this action and use your card's power. And it gives me these four options right here. And it also gives me that special action. And I can do these in any order I'd like. If I want to do the special out, uh, the, the special power first, I could do that before the one of the main actions. It doesn't really matter in this case. Um, with the wild biome, I can plant them wherever, and they don't all have to be in the same. So I ended up putting three just right across the line here, and then two uh, for that special power to in other biomes. I wanted to have something in as many biomes as possible so I could start growing them in different biomes. I also placed them in this way because 
currently, for the current season, the sun is shining down this way. Now, if you played photosynthesis, this will sound familiar, but at the end of each season, you're going to get points for how the sun shines on your plants. Only bushes, I'm sorry, only small trees and large trees get points. Small trees get one point, large trees get two points, but small and large trees also cast shadows. So if there's a small tree here, then the, the, the plant right behind it will not get points because it will be blocked by the sun. But if there was a small tree here and a big tree here, it would still see both of them. It would see the small tree for one point and the big tree for two. If it was a big tree right here, it would block the next two spots. And so every plant casts a shadow, big tree or small tree, and anything behind those shadows will be, won't count for points um, at the end of that season. But then as it's Again, when the sun is up here, it's looking at these straight vertical lines. At the end of the season, it rotates over here, and then it looks this way for points, and then here, and then here. So you, each season has a different direction from where you're, the sun is shining, so you can kind of plan for that in the way that you build. That's why I kind of built out this way, so I can hopefully get lots of plants that see that sun and give me points at the end of the season. So you can see um, my opponent here chose the sprout action and then use this bonus you see it went up to one to turn one of those three sprouts that they planted into a small tree note on your board you have these small crevices those cannot be planted on um, they but they do break up forests so you have to plan around those a little bit we finish that and now we are on to the next draft so now so we can see some cards here with three on them and um, I will be picking the card here now that's something to note with first player so somebody will be assigned the first player at the beginning and then you get points um, if you're if you're not the first player it's kind of a equalizer there but Whenever somebody, whenever the first player chooses a card, they will put a first player token on the leftmost card that's left. So, for example, when I choose this card here, that little first player token is placed on the leftmost card. Now, if the other player, if another player chooses that card, they will be first next turn. Next turn. If they do not choose it, in this case, they chose the other card which means this went to the fertility zone. Notice how now this is worth four. I received the first player token back. And again, now I have the ability, I have to do a power in the snow biome and I can do a small tree growth. In that case, I do three sprouts again and I grow one of my trees to, or one of my sprouts to a small tree. Again, you see these powers uh, going up and allowing me to do more with those special powers. All right, I'm going to skip ahead to the end of the season so that you can see what that season scoring looks like. Okay, here is the end of the first season. You can tell by the number of biome cards that you have in your, uh, in your hands, these previous biome cards, uh, and it'll also say around what... what the, five of five in this case because there's five cards for this first round that you draft and then four then three then two so this will be the last draft here are the three options i have one thing i did want to point out was a what's called an aridity card now, some cards when they come out have this little symbol here if that symbol is not if that card is not chosen it goes into the fertility zone and cancels the last the previous card of that type in that row so now where this was the i believe yeah this was the um, dark green biome marsh i believe it had maybe two or three in here i don't remember but this one flipped that card over and now those fertility icons don't count towards the end of the game so for instance if another aridity card of this type came over the one would still be there but the three would be canceled out so when you're drafting you're not only picking what you want and where you want to work in the biome but you're also picking 
especially if you're this, the last player to choose, you're picking what you want to go into the fertility zone based on what is going well in your own world. Like, hey, I'm getting a lot of uh, a lot of trees in this red area. I want to put more fertility points into the red area so that I can get more points at the end of the game for those. Also, you see here, I put a bush down, and that now connects these two, and I have a forest of size three. These seedlings do not count. These sprouts do not count as part of that largest forest, and only your largest forest counts as points. So if you had a, a forest of three over here and a forest of four over here, you wouldn't get points for both. You'd only get points for the one that has four. So I'm going to choose my last biome card. Then the other card will be uh, placed in the fertility zone. Also, BGA is a bit tricky here. If you do one of these powers, if you if you choose one of these powers, it'll say end your turn. Here, I'll show you. So I chose the, the, the grow action here. And I grew these two trees. Then you have to say, OK, even though it says you may use your card's power, you're like, wait, I didn't get to yet. You still press OK, and then it lets you do the power again. So it goes back to that list of things you did. And if you did the power first, then press OK, it'll say, OK, here's the main action you can use as well. And so now I can put a bush. And in this case, I can put a bush to connect uh, some of these trees and make it more because right now I have one two three four five and I can add at least one more in this case yeah I just um, add one up here so that I can start to get more a bigger tree there oh not, yeah all right so we are at the end of the season the sun is going to score, and the largest forest is going to score. So first, this the sun is, or first they're doing largest forest scoring on my opponent, and they didn't realize that it had to be large ones connecting. The sun moves, and you get points as well for that as well. So I was able to get 13 points from all the points here. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six seven which shaded this and then this one did not get shaded eight so eight points from that and then five points from my largest biome all right i'm going to show that one more time i think we missed some of it here let's we'll look at my planet here and how it starts to score so yeah i chose the wrong ones when i was re-implanting this these are the two that i did in the actual game and then in the scoring First, the opponent is scoring, and then you'll see mine scoring. Here are the scores for the, the sunlight, and it shows the shadows as well. And then here are the scores for the largest contiguous forest. Can't be diagonal, has to be uh, adjacent horizontally or vertically. And then we start the next round. And you keep going through until you get through the entire uh, four seasons, and let's look at what an, at the end what that looks like. Okay, this is the final draft of the game. You can see around, there's only two cards drafted in this last season, and the fertility zone you can see has started to grow, but the aridity cards have blocked out a few. And in fact, uh, by the end of this, both of these biomes give you zero points for big trees because of those aridity cards. So those two cards, uh, those two trees right there will not give me any points in that snow biome, though they did give me points for the sunlight and they'll give me a little bit of points here on this sunlight as well. Uh, you can see here where their aridity had canceled one card, but then other cards had been built and so it didn't completely destroy it. But uh, we did lose quite a few fertility points based on some of those aridity cards. I've been here trying to create a connection using bushes of as many, as a large contiguous force as possible. You can see here's what a water looks like that was able to let me grow two sprouts. I thought it might get me three, but it only lets you do two, but it let me pick which two, and so I picked these two to grow. And then 
after we do the final action here, we're going to look at points here for the final season. And then we will do, so you can see, you'll be able to see the points on my board here coming through. So there's for the points, you can see all the shadows as well. Those are the points I get for the various trees coming from this side. Here's my largest forest that's all connected. And then finally, those are points for the trees that I had. Only big trees give you those points. And those um, and, and they give you the points based on the number of those fertility symbols down in the fertility zone uh, as the game goes on. That is the game Evergreen. Again, it's a fairly quick drafting game through those four seasons. You're looking to create large, a large contiguous forest, and you're looking to get points through those sun tokens and then building big trees to get you points based on fertility tokens at the end of the game. Hope this is helpful. Thanks.